How's it going boys? Razine here for Astrophotography and in today's video of the night sky we are looking at the night sky of February in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you're new here how the night sky works real fast it's a curated list of deep sky objects, planets, events, things like that which I think might be interesting to you to photograph throughout the month of February. Now all the deep sky objects are arranged by focal lengths based off of the full frame format but the conversions are available on the left hand side here so no matter what camera you're using, you should find something for everyone. So to begin with deep sky objects, it's gonna be slightly different here on the first one because it actually covers two to 400 millimeters as it looks different at each of these ranges. And that is IC1369, the Elephant's Trunk Nebula in the constellation of Cepheus. So the Elephant's Trunk Nebula is a massive emission nebula. So it will respond really well to those narrowband filters that we all like using. So definitely HARGB would work, SHO would work. You see a lot of the Hubble palette images, they look really striking. Depending on how you frame it, you could also punch straight into the trunk itself. Very iconic image. So two to 400 millimeters would be my suggestion. Go over the Cepheus and drop some time on the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. So at 500 to 600 millimeters of focal length, I'm gonna suggest you go over to the constellation of Cassiopeia and in here is IC 1805, which is the Heart Nebula. Heart Nebula, very similar to the Elephant's Trunk, large emission-based nebula. So again, those narrowband filters will come in handy. Also, it's got the Fish Head Nebula at the very tip of the heart. So that is what I would recommend for 500 to 600 millimeters. At the 700 to 800 millimeters mark, staying it within that area of sky, back to Cepheus here, and this is Coldwell 4, C4, the Iris Nebula. Now the Iris Nebula, very popular, very beautiful reflection nebulae located in this part of the sky. Very small jewel encompassed by reflective dust. But the other kicker here is if you've got dark skies, you're gonna see tremendous amounts of surrounding dust around this target. It's very beautiful target to image. So that is why I'm suggesting in February at these focal lengths, go and look at the Iris Nebula. At a thousand millimeters, when we go over this constellation of Auriga, and in here is IC410, the Tadpole Nebula. Tadpole, again, being another emission-based nebulae, a common theme here, you know I'm going with this, narrowband filters. So the Tadpole Nebula actually is like a shell of an object, but in there you can actually see tadpoles. It's quite clear this one, how it got its name. So if you get good integration time, those tadpoles themselves look like they've got a bit of an eerie glow coming off them. They're very beautiful and a very nice image to take and to look at. So that is why I suggest at a thousand millimeters, we look at the Tadpole Galaxy, which is why I suggest at a thousand millimeters to look at the Tadpole Nebula. At one and a half thousand millimeters, when we go over to the constellation of Ursa Major here, and last month I suggested about shooting one of these targets on its own, this month we're including its mate. This is M81 and M82, the Bode Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy. Now these are very iconic looking galaxies and they do benefit from a tad of hydrogen alpha thrown in there as well. I've done a HARGB of Bodes and Cigar as well. It really, especially on Cigar Galaxy, that bit of HA really makes that red band pop out. It's absolutely beautiful. So that is why I suggest that one and a half thousand millimeters, take some time and shoot M81 and M82. At 2000 millimeters now, we're gonna swing over to the constellation of Cain's Venetici. Here we have another very iconic galaxy. This is M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now the Whirlpool Galaxy is a head-on, straight looking at us, interacting galaxy. You've got the big one and then the smaller one underneath it, which I think is a justifier replacement. It's called the justifier replacement. You'll find it. So, very beautiful face on galaxy. Small, so we need those long focal lengths. And the apertures associated with those long focal lengths will help pull out those finer details. So that is my suggestion for 2000 millimeters. So on to planets now for you planet hunters out there. Quick note, I base these off of my latitude in the United Kingdom, which is around the Midlands area. And also it's only if they've gone over 20 degrees altitude, you know, for a decent amount of time at some point during the month. Otherwise you're kind of just shooting through too much atmosphere, you know? Anyway, you planet hunters know what I'm on about. So the two planets that I've identified in February is Mars, and Uranus. So Mars, self-explanatory, very, very famous planet. As we all know, the red planet, it's very obvious in the night sky, big red dot out there. So Mars is one thing to shoot. You can get those polar ice caps on it. It's very beautiful. 
Uranus, a lot harder, further away, smaller, dimmer. You really need long telescopes with small cameras and probably big Barlow lenses as well. But if you have the equipment for it, Uranus is there as well. And those are the two planets throughout February. And now time to talk about the moon phases throughout February as well. This is in case you like taking super high resolution images of the moon or just photos of the moon in general, or you want to know when to break out the narrowband filters or just when to sleep in because of the full moon. This is for you. So the full moon in February falls on the 5th of February and that is the snow moon. The last quarter is on the 13th of February. The new moon is the 20th of February and the first quarter is the 27th of February. In North America, the Native American tribes refer to February's full moon as the snow moon because typically it's quite cold in February. It is as deep as that, there's no deeper meaning here. It's cold in February, you get the snow moon. Other names for this moon also include the storm moon as well as the hunger moon. And the University College of London's Almanac refers to February's full moon as the wolf moon, probably for the same reasons as January's wolf moon, howling because of the lack of food perhaps. But that is where February's moon gets its name from. Since there's no meteor showers during February, we're going to top this episode off now with a couple of events during February that I think you should know about. On the 22nd of February, we have Venus and Jupiter close to the moon. This is around the dusk time, obviously, because we've got Venus there. Venus only ever is, what, about 20 degrees from the sun. So dusk, you'll have Venus and Jupiter close to the moon. And on the 26th of February, the moon is actually very close to the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, the Reflection Nebula M45. So much so that a two to 300 millimeter camera lens on a full frame camera should be all you need to take a photo of both of them together. Now this could make a very interesting target and a very interesting photo opportunity, but if you miss it this month, do not worry. There's plenty of opportunities coming up to shoot the moon next to Pleiades. So that is a couple of events in February. And with that, that is the night sky in February, all done as well. That's another one, two for two at this point. So I hope this video has been useful for you. Hope it's given you a bit of inspiration of what to get out there in image during the month of February. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think I could have done better, go and have get a thin thumbs down and consider subscribing for more videos such as this throughout this year. All that's left to me to say is thank you very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. See you later.